Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to look at linear functions and some of their key characteristics. So we're looking at a word problem situation. A phalange will be worth $774 in three years. It sounds like a point, time, producing an output value, a value. So 3, 774, if we think of that in terms of a point on a graph. And then $690 in five years, time, comma, value. 10 years, 480. We want to see if this is going to be a linear or nonlinear situation. So we want to calculate differences. When we subtract, we want to do so in the same order. I always recommend going up. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Might help to have might help to have a calculator, so we're going to do 690 minus 774. We get negative 84. We also want to find what is the rate of change among that time period. So divide negative 84 by 2, and we get negative 42. All right, let's try this one. And this one, we subtract and get 5, we subtract and get negative 210, and divide those, another negative 42. So it's linear because the rate of change is constant. It's the same number. All right, so we need to set up scale on x-axis and scale on y-axis. So we've got time here in terms of units being years. And then we've got value over here in terms of dollars. But as you can see, we can't really fit 774 on here. So we're going to have to change our scale going this way. So maybe we can make each one of these worth 100. So Two of those, 200, 300, 400, 600, 800, something like that. And then we should be able to plot our points approximately three years. I didn't have to mark these because I'm going by one year. So three years, 774. Five years, there's 600, there's 700, just a little bit lower there. And then 10 years, or 80. Then you want to take a ruler and draw the line as it is a linear function. Put arrows at the ends. Pass through your points. Use a ruler. Be exact. All right. Find the slope. Well, actually, we've already done the slope. Remember when we found rate of change? That being a constant, that was the slope. Now you could uh, go through and use the slope formula. M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But like I said, we already found the slope. A rate of change was negative 42. That's our slope. So slope is negative 42. Now what does it mean in the context of the problem? Why is it negative? What's happening to our values? We're going down. So we're decreasing by $42. So so there's the negative. Decrease by $42. And slope is a rate. And the key word for rate is per. Per. And what was our x-axis scale? Each one of those marks was a year. So the value is going to decrease by $42 per year. That's the context of the problem. We're talking about uh, the value of the phalange. All right, writing the function, it should say f of x. So we want to use, since we don't know the y-intercept, it was when we looked at a graph, it would have been a guess. These are the data points that we have. These are points. We know the slope. That's point slope. So f of t, I'm sorry, f of x 
minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. We know the slope was negative 42. f of x minus, we can pick any one of these points. I'm going to go right there. So the y coordinate is 774, x minus 3. Need to distribute. Multiply those and we get plus 126. Add 774 to both sides. It's a like term over here. So we're going to get f of x is equal to negative 42x. I add 774 and we get 900. That's our function. It's the value of x. Now, knowing that function, What is the y-intercept of the function, and what does it represent in the problem? Okay. We can actually look at this function and see the y-intercept because it's in y equals mx plus b form, and the b is the y-intercept. But in general, if you need to ever find any function's y-intercept, just replace x with 0. So f of 0 is equal to negative 42 times 0 plus 900. That's 0 plus 900 is 900. Intercepts are points. Points have parentheses. x was 0, y was 900. What does it mean in this problem? Well, times 0 the value is 900, so that's probably the purchase price. We might say initial value or purchase price of the phalange. was the $900, the starting value. That's what a y-intercept is going to mean. Let's go back to our function. What is the x-intercept? What does that mean? Well, for the y-intercept, we replaced f of x, the function value, with 0. For the x-intercept, we want to, get to kind of do the opposite. We replace x with 0. Here we want to replace f of x with 0. So 0 equals negative 42x plus 900. So we replace the y-coordinate, which is f of x, with 0. We now need to solve for x. So if we're trying to get x by itself, let's get rid of the plus 900. So subtract 900. Divide both sides by negative 42. We're going to get x. And we are going to have to round this. x is approximate. So again, on calculator, negative 900 divided by negative 42 it says 21.42857, etc. Tenth of a year is one decimal place. So we're going to go 40, oh, so I'm sorry, 21.4, and then the 2 follows means we don't bump that up. And we want to turn that into a point, 21.4 comma 0. Well, what does it represent? If we looked at that graph, it's where we hit out here where the value is zero. So that it's the time that it takes for the phalange to be worthless. So we can write that out. And what does it mean? It's the time that it takes for the phalange to have zero value. That would be our, what it means in the problem. What domain interval is the function increasing, decreasing, or constant? Where is our graph going up? It's not. Where is it decreasing? All throughout here, it's decreasing. If we're just talking about not the situation, but the function itself. From negative infinity to positive infinity. Where is it flat? 
it's not. So there's no place where it's horizontal. Where do we have positive function values? Where are we above? All of this is above. Now remember, we just kind of found out that if we keep going along here, it's going to hit at about 21.4. So it's above from negative infinity all the way down to there. Where is it below? Well, this part of the graph going forever that way is going to be below, which is what negative function values are. So from 21.4 on forever to the right to positive infinity. And lastly, we'll look at end behavior, what's happening at the extreme. So as x goes to infinity, which means goes right forever, as you go to the right, what's happening to the y values? Where are they going? They're going down forever. So we would say that this one's heading towards negative infinity going down forever. As x goes towards negative infinity, which means as you go left on the graph, left, 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 where are the y coordinates going? Where are you going? You're going up forever. So that's going to be positive infinity there. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.